Welcome back. We are on this last part. This is gonna be the last part of the series of getting this boat ready for the water. I'm gonna show you right now, we're gonna flip it in just a few minutes here, but I gotta go around and fix any of those TIG welds on the water lines that could have potentially leaked. I literally took a magnifying glass and went over every weld, top and bottom, to make sure that we were watertight before we even water test it. So I'm hoping when we float it, no water's coming in. I'll show you what I did. So anything that looked like a potential pinhole, this one I think would have for sure leaked right here so we're going to go ahead it'll take five seconds on each weld heat it up add a little filler swirl it in watertight it so i looked with a magnifying glass on the top and on the sides to make sure we are in good shape i'm going to go ahead get around fill all these in and then we're going to flip it back over so we can get it on the trailer and get it to the water for a water test It's Monday of a new week. I think it's the 21st of August. We've got the boat flipped back over. Everything's in basically to this point. So what I have to do before we water test it, I wanna get the front deck structure in. I got the gas tank, so I know how much space that's gonna take up and it'll tell me how much room I can leave between the stringers for the floor or the floor supports. That's big. So I need to make sure I can fit everything in there once everything's welded and get the gas tank out if I ever need to. But we're gonna build that. I'm working right now, real quick, first thing is getting these corner gussets in. So that'll fit up, we'll weld this all around nice and pretty, put a corner cap on there. And that's gonna add a lot of strength too, uh, to the actual transom. So this piece being full welded, a little gap there, but we'll fill that in. But we'll get this fit up as tight as we can. And then getting this welded in, all the way across the cap on top all the way across is just a little added structure to the transom so that's what i'm gonna work on keep welding try to get everything welded by the end of the week so that next week is all finish work Got a half day of welding in yesterday, which means the whole front deck is framed in. I had to leave a big opening here for the gas tank, but I'll either weld something across or rivet something across once we get the tank in before the deck goes on just to give a little more support. It was really sturdy. I ended up just adding one vertical support in the middle. I don't even know if I needed it. I could walk around, but I'm thinking if there's two people in the middle of that, why not play it safe? And I beefed it up. So these supports here are going to be underneath a sheet of aluminum that's going across that'll be full welded in. And we'll probably end up just doing some plunge cuts to weld those in there. So that's where we're at. I'm gonna get this plate in this morning. That's my big task. There'll also be a big hatch in here for life jackets and access to the front for the trolling motor and electrical and such. And then as soon as I'm done with that, I'm jumping to the back and putting the back storage compartment in, kind of a little tackle tray in the back. Got to decide exactly the dimensions on that, but I'm thinking I'm just going to run it even with this. So we'll go on this side of this floor brace and come up to the bottom of here. But that's just going to house one battery and a switch panel. So really straightforward, simple there. Nothing too complicated, not looking for a ton of storage, uh, just somewhere to put stuff on top. And 
How's the battery? This thing's coming along. I just ordered the tough coat kit essentially. So we'll do muriatic acid everywhere I can rub it in to etch into the aluminum. And then I'm gonna apply their primer for metal. And then I'll apply the top coat. It's a textured non-slip, but I'm just gonna do it all over the interior. Index today is getting up near a hundred. If you live in like Texas, Florida, those places that get crazy hot and humid, I don't know how you do it. It is hot in here. I gotta put my welding jacket on every time because the other day I sunburnt through my t-shirt, maybe because I was so sweaty. I don't know. But I'm taking breaks when I can, drinking lots of water, and trying to keep working because I'm running out of time. So let me show you what I've got done to this point, and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna be working on the rest of the day today. So that front deck frame is completely in, and then this is a panel. I still gotta sand and fill those. They're just plunge cuts through the sheet into the supports, and then I just MIG them hot and nasty, and then I sand them flush. But it's a nice little finished piece in front there. It'll get painted, um, try to make it look sharp, and just, it's not too bad of an angle. You'll be able to step down it no problem. And then the other big thing I've been working on for a while here, is a fuel fill so i already tested it fits right in here but it's at an angle so you're at the gas station you're filling up if for some reason you overfilled it's not going to go everywhere in the boat it's going to run out down the boat and pretty happy with those tig welds got to make sure it's sealed up nice and tight so water, the water and gas can run off of it basically the hoses will run down through to the fuel tank that's going to be right underneath it and the floor will get cut around that because it is welded to the sidewall and tacked to the frame it'll make the floor fun to fit around that but it's going to look really nice when it's all done now to the back of the boat time to go ahead and build our framework in we're going to have basically a shelf sitting out from the bottom of this two by four tube and that's gonna run across probably the whole length. I gotta hide the back of the boat a little bit. So it's gonna run out to this support here for this part so we can fit a battery and a switch panel. And then the bilge pump can go down in between in the middle. So that'll case off and over and then we'll just run it just along the edge there make a nice little shelf right here. So that's what I'm gonna try to get done the rest of the day. It's only 1.30 been here since like seven this morning working on it so big day because as soon as i finish this back area then i can get the swim deck i'm gonna do a little swim step out here i'll get a ladder on that eventually but once that's done then i can get on the trailer and we can water test it fill it with water see if it leaks You know what this means. The time has come. We're gonna leak test this right now. Filling it with water. We'll inspect everything as thorough as we can. We'll bring it out on this hill right here. Twist it, rotate it. Try to find anywhere it could be leaking. That way we can fix it if we need to. And from what I can tell, no leaks. Filled her up pretty high and where I couldn't get water to flow to, I took the hose and put pressure against the wells there and up on the bow rising up where I could get at them. And I got nothing. So we're gonna go ahead, pop my hole in the bottom. It's where the drain plug is gonna go anyway. And let this thing drain out. And then we're gonna flip it, get the bottom all done. And then we can flip it back over, hopefully, and finish up the inside and then it's it's time to get into finishing work.
You can hear the fans going in the background. Today, another heat index of over 100 degrees here in Michigan. It's so humid. The bottom of the boat is completely done. We've got the chine guards. Those are ticked on on the sides, just stitched. And then on top, they're welded. Center keel is full welded. That's 3 16 inch. Just bent to about six degrees. And then it ties into one of the regular stringers. A lot of stringers on this, they give some strength support, but also they keep it from getting slippery with that outboard jet. And then we tied those chine guards in in the front. I say we, but it was just me here today. Marty helped a little bit this morning and then tied in that keel, clean the bottom up, flip it over, finish the interior, and then we'll get to acid washing the inside, prepping it for paint. Today is the 24th of August. This thing has to be done by September 10th. There might be some late nights. All that interior and electrical work has to get done. What just happened? And so sadly, we didn't get it on camera. I'm glad it wasn't on camera. I had this genius idea that we'll just, the boat was upside down. I hooked straps to the other side and I just figured we'd roll it back over. In retrospect, I should have just picked it up vert, like on end with the forklift and then set it down slowly and backed up i just kind of kept backing up and there was slack in the straps and by the time we realized there was slack it was too late i couldn't couldn't save it Corey ran that way river ran that way and the boat came down basically from on end so eight and a half feet up down onto the concrete hit the front of the forklift but here's the here's the positive note besides no one dying uh is that all that happened was a little little ding to the, the chine guard. I already sanded it. A little ding here and a little ding there. No welds were hurt. No dents to the bottom. I looked underneath. All the welds on the bottom looked good. So basically, this boat can fall to concrete from six to eight feet in the air. And it doesn't get hurt. I bet it's going to hit some waves and do just fine. Yeah. How do you feel about all that? Um, I am a little indifferent. <laughs> Are you still shaking? Well, no, I'm oh. fine. Oh, okay. But this is the kind of stuff that happens when Tom gets a little excited. Well, who would have thought it'd be safer to flip a boat with four people than it would be to flip a boat with a forklift? One person on the forklift and one person trying to resist the... Yeah, I knew. I was like, you get out of there. I think there was a <laughs> panic. Corey, get out of there. Get out of there. And then Aunt Joanne up front came back here about ready to kill me. Because she don't want anybody to get hurt. So we can't weld today because we're in a we brownout right a brown now. Out. We got half power. So unfortunately, there will be no welding. But I need to order the flooring, the marine vinyl for the main floor and the front deck. And I gotta order some hatches, mainly for the battery compartment, maybe a small one to service the fuel tank uh, if that needs to be serviced. And then a hatch for up front and here, right here, for access to the anchor winch and or a shove life jackets in there. All I wanted to do today, before we have to go up north for our marathon, all I really wanted to do was put the cover on top of this but that's gonna have to wait till we get back on Monday. So realistically, if we can acid wash it Monday, we can prime it and paint it on Tuesday. And that gives me Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday to get all of the interior wood cut, the front board in, the motor's gonna have to go on, the tiller handle has to be installed still, uh, all the electrical. Lots to do. Lots to do. Question for you. Yeah. Are you sweaty? I'm I'm soaked. It's it's been the theme of the week. Heat index has been insane. Good news is the high tomorrow for our marathon is 71 degrees, low hum humidity, and that's gonna get the salmon run kicking off. So hopefully this boat's done just in time for that. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna wear a snowsuit tomorrow for the marathon. Like on Sunday? No. Nope. Oh, for the, for marathon. the marathon. Yeah. All right. Not only did we finish our marathon, but we got the little boat out. 
and caught our first couple salmon of the year. It's about 6 a.m., but I'm here on a Monday just to work on the big boat. I got a few days left where this is all I have to work on, and I gotta get this done. So here's what I'm hoping. Finish welding today, all the welding. I've got a few things, I gotta put some brackets in under the tackle trays for rod holders, uh, rod storage. I've got to get a swim step on the back, and right now I'm gonna weld on this back plate. I'll show you what it looks like. So it's just a top plate here that'll get coated with a tough coat paint. I'm gonna do a panel across the back, a little panel to cover that, a panel over here, and then this section is going to be access to the battery and the bilge and stuff. So that's actually just gonna get covered with a snap-on cover. So I've had that in the past. It works really well and makes access really easy without having to cut in a compartment or anything, and it makes getting the battery in and out a lot easier too, and it'll look good as well. I'm gonna leave the corners open. It's just gonna let everything breathe, let everything dry out better in the back of the boat. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, that's where we're at. Good news is the little boat over there, he's a fishy little bugger. We got our first couple salmon of the year yesterday uh, up north in Michigan. Uh, just a little early push came in in the last week or so and we got to work on them and caught a few, well hooked a few, caught a couple. That is officially the end of welding on this boat, I hope. But we uh, went ahead, got everything welded in, the fuel fill, tackle trays are welded, come around to the back. This is the back battery storage. There will be a switch panel here, and then this will all be painted with the tough coat. I'll put a little glove box in and that other small compartment over there. And then we'll do a cover, just a canvas cover snap-on for this space. And I'll probably do a canvas snap-on cover to cover the switch panel because we tow a lot during the winter time. It'd be cool to recess it in there and put a cover on it. I could do that down the road, but for now I think we're just gonna cover it. And then on the back, we have our swim step. So that is complete. I can step right up and climb in the boat, no problem. But we'll do some sort of a ladder for the dogs. And it'll help people up too, but we'll do maybe like a three step down because this will likely be right about at the water line when the boat is floating, especially if there's anybody in the back of the boat. So I think that'll work really well for people and the boss man over there. Rivy, he's talking about you. We're ready tomorrow. We're gonna hit the inside with muratic acid, anything that we're gonna paint. We've got the primer and the paint. This could be washed, acid washed, primed, and maybe even painted with tough coat by the end of the day tomorrow. Chances are I'm not gonna be able to sleep again like I did this morning, get up at four o'clock and come in and start. I can't help it. I think we're gonna go home and have some salmon that we caught yesterday and a beer sounds really good after a long day of work. If you ever want to support our channel, it's not buy me a beer, but it's called buymeacoffee.com. I might use that money as beer money if you feel like buying me a beer. Subscribing, giving us a thumbs up, commenting, and, and... What? A super thanks. Super thanks right here on YouTube. Yeah. Any of it, just comment. Yeah. Tell us if you like what we're doing. 
Okay, let's go. Mostly, like, mostly this is River's agenda for us. Well, we had to go on the bigger boat so we had more room for friends to go fishing. Yeah. He has, in particular, two really good I friend did, girls. I did order the bimini top today for him. Whoa. So, that's pretty exciting. I request one thing on this boat. I request a couple things, but one thing from yesterday when we went fishing, a net holder. Ordered that, too. Did you seriously? Yeah, you asked for it. You're amazing. What's the other one? Um, an umbrella holder, but that's the bimini. Yeah, the bimini will take care of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the chairs. You gave me my chairs. Jeez, it seems like this is your boat. Well. <laughs> <laughs> we really did it. We got it to this point with time, I think, to get everything done before our trip in, what's today, the 29th yeah. of August. We've got the trip to go up north the 15th, but we'd love to have it broken in before that, motor-wise. So we're at the process now. We've got to scrub this thing down real quick just with dish soap and water and then with a scotch spray pad. And then as soon as we rinse that off, we're going to acid washing. So it's just muratic acid. I found the instructions simply from Tough Coats YouTube channel. They had some videos of just a scotch spray pad with muratic acid, do a section, rinse it, and we're going to do that basically the whole boat that anything is going to get painted so that's going to be the top the sides between the tackle trays we're going to leave this bare and then the back area all of the back area including the face of the transom is going to get painted too i cut out a couple things for a glove box a recessed switch panel in the back there and then up front we have the access hatch for the bow so that's where we're at in terms of the build. Now it's time to get to painting. Maybe by the end of the day today, it might be a reach, but if we can get this thing acid washed, inside, dried, we could prime it today. I don't know if we'll get to painting it, but we can prime it and then paint it first thing tomorrow, and then that'll be it. Let's go. What are you making? So what we gotta do before we apply the tough coat, is we gotta put the tough coat primer on. And I basically just followed their YouTube videos on how to apply the primer. Really simple, we acid washed. Um, now we're gonna prime. But there's big goopies in it, is that the proper term? So I wanna stir it better, try to smooth it out. I don't know if they're all gonna come out in terms of those goopies, but by golly, we're gonna try. Oh my, Lanta. <laughs> we'll stick with this speed. <laughs> Hardest part about tough coat is getting the shipping ring off. Oh. I think my hands are a little tender from the scrub down out there. This is how I feel every time I open glue. <laughs> From time to stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You, you think, once you get this off, that it's open, that it's literally just a seal. In this case, you do want to break the seal. You want to say more about that? Yeah, otherwise, don't break the seal. Whew. Now, it opens like a normal paint. Here. Primer was the U95 metal primer we did a single coat of that and it finishes like really hard and really smooth and this they recommend one coat you can kind of see through it a little bit but it's covered there's really no bare metal but yeah it's really like your fingernail doesn't want to scratch into it it's a self-etching primer we also primed river it's been a little over an hour now since we finished, so the front was done an hour and a half ago. But we're gonna do two coats of this. So Corey agreed to stick it out with me. We just finished some pizza 
for dinner. It's 525, so hopefully we'll have the interior first coat done around six, stick around till seven, however late we finish, and then we'll do one more coat. So when we come in tomorrow, it'll be halfway cured. I can work on getting the trailer set up to put the boat on the trailer. Because once the boat goes on the trailer, we mount the motor, we put the floor in, things really go to finish stages after that. So oh, I'm excited. We're gonna stir this up really well though first. And are you gonna use the same method you did for the oh yeah, so that's a beautiful gray. Yeah, this is the <laughs> so this is the Tough Coat UT213 200 series. Uh, medium texture, so medium granulates in it. Not super heavy, not super light, and it's a medium gray. Oh man, when I stick this down in there, I, I can, can just see. feel all of the rubber down on inside of it. So it makes you wonder, like, if you only it. used the paint, what would that look like? Could I just have a really nice coat of paint? Because yeah. the hardest thing with aluminum and, and painting it or texturing it, so you oh, can see the little yeah. granules, uh, is getting it to stick. So bear, I mean, if, you're, if I'm repainting an old John boat that was painted at the factory and with a nice enamel and they have everything down to a science, that's one thing. But this is a whole new thing for me other than the little white boat, which we had powder coated, but that was darn near as expensive as this entire 17 and a half foot boat is going to be to do. And that was only 12 foot. So, you know, there's a way to do it. And I think these companies are getting better and better at getting the right combination of primer paint and process. We're not going to paint you gray. Okay, you're going to stay white, boss man. Here we go. Cool, cool, cool. Right. Let's get to work. I think so. Yeah. What time is it? It is 9.21. We stuck it out. Really long day. Not 9.21 a.m. That's <laughs> dark outside. 9.21 p.m. What do you think about this tough coat? I think it's pretty awesome. I think, yeah, I think it's going to look really good. So we ended up doing three coats. We'll walk around the boat, take a look. The first, after the primer, don't mind the stuff down low because that's going to be covered by a board. The first coat after the primer was like, oh no. It was really thin and I was getting a little nervous. Second coat really filled in a lot of those places. And then the third coat, we ended up doing a third coat, really filled things in nice and is going to end up being really, I think, the seal the deal kind of thing so it went in it's wet still so it's wet shiny but it's gonna dry more of a matte finish i'm really happy we left some chrome i guess polished so we take a scotch bright to the stuff that's really silver so we can dull it like the gunnel rails uh the front deck we'll go ahead and do that here at some point on the fuel fill left that bare so fuel can run off if it spills or overflows at the gas station. Um, the excess crumblies, they tend to just kind of crumble off the rubber pieces. But all in all, medium gray, really happy with how this turned out. I can't wait to start getting the floor in because that's really going to make it look nice. Tomorrow, got to get the trailer set up to take the boat because as soon as I can get the boat on the trailer, the motors are going on. So at least the big one, but we just got the 99 high thrust. It's kind of Yamaha's pro kicker, but we like that long tiller handle with the shift out on the handle. Makes life a lot easier when you're running for trolling and back bouncing and back trolling. And then the Suzuki 140, that's the big pusher on this one. That will get bolted up tomorrow. We'll do something with the swim step, don't worry either grip tape or we'll put this same tough coat on it. I think that might be a nice look. 
that's going to be a night for us. We'll see you tomorrow. Corey just reminded me that I should probably videotape this. So here we go. Here we are, August 31st, motor is on, that 140. So at the jet pump, the way this works, 140 horsepower head. If this was a propeller, it would be rated 140 at the prop. However, it's a jet unit. We're gonna lose 30% of the power head horsepower. So at the pump, jet pump, it's 100 horse or 98, I think is what the math comes down to. Got that hung, really happy. I mean, this thing is, it's not going anywhere. Corey was bouncing up and down on it. I think my angle of the transom is gonna be good. There is a way on this motor to disable. Right now, when you trim all the way down, it automatically stops. There is a way to disable that and allow it to tuck under a little bit more. We're gonna run it how it is first. And if we need to adjust, we will. But I think, I mean, the angle of the jet pump is shooting down as in down this way. So that should pop the bow down, pop the stern up and go. We'll see how it runs. That's the only way to really know. But inside is painted. I'm gonna move to the front area and get everything done up there I can in terms of the anchor winch and tower on the front, the trolling motor bracket. I'm gonna get the fuel tank and fill and everything all in so I can run the fuel line. It's gonna go back underneath. We'll put it in a conduit, run it all the way back and then it'll pop up after it hits the water fuel separator up here to the motor and the kicker motor. It's time to finish this up. Didn't time lapse this because it was just the same thing over and over, but Corey crushed it, got foam in. Another thing I like about this foam is that there are gaps and cracks and stuff. So air and water can move and it can get dry in there versus that spray in two part foam uh, that eventually usually gets wet. So this doesn't get wet doesn't soak up water anyway and it's gonna let it dry under there the other thing tonight was I got the fuel tank and that was really challenging to get the fill everything tightened up underneath I had to lay down in this cavity and put everything in sort of blind reaching in my arms are all cut up but it's in got a little boot grommet in there so nice and protected for the fuel line and electrical stuff to run through. We'll start on that tomorrow. A lot more foam to do, and then this will be where the batteries will go for the 24 volt trolley motor that'll be mounted on the front. What say you? Riv says, let's go home. Yeah. He gets to a point where he's just like, gets fussy and wants to go. So whiny. A bit more to go, but we're really through the worst of it, I think. You hope? expect so it wasn't that bad cool and here's what we're getting into today wiring so what I did is I bundled up the couple things that are going to the front and the fuel line we're running that all in a inch and a half split conduit and I welded in those brackets 
it's a real snug fit, but that's a good thing, I think. So that's gonna hold our conduit up out of the way, kind of like how it is back there. It drops in the back there where we can run the fuel line up to the motor. Actually, the water fuel separator will be inside here. Um, we have to run a solenoid pack for the anchor winch, which will be just tucked right behind there. And then the switch panel goes there. So first thing I gotta do is get all the wire pulled where it needs to go. Then I can start adding in our accessories. And I did use this wiring harness from pontoonstuff.com. Use it on pontoon boats all the time. This is just another way of showing you how awesome this is and how easy it makes my life. I'm using it on a fishing boat and it's gonna be perfect. I'll have to cut it down a little bit because it's made for up to a 28 foot boat. But I would way rather be able to run that and just splice everything in than make my own harness and fiddle around with that. So this will be color coded. You've got your navigation light with the green and gray. You've got docking lights. Those will be my LED headlights. Uh, I'm gonna use, this is normally a horn wire. I'm actually gonna use that for my LEDs up in the front. And then there's a ground that services everything. So that ground will split into each of the wires. So three grounds, really cool, really easy. Makes my life way simpler, way faster for this. I'm gonna keep pulling this conduit through. That'll let me hook up my fuel line to the tank and the gas system will almost be done. To this point, I've got the fuel system completely in. I'm gonna tie up the wire uh, split conduit there. I've got a couple spots for zip ties. That'll get tied up a little tighter too. So you can't see it, or at least for the most part. Switch panel's in over there. That's all wired in to the harness. Quick and easy plug and play. Just wire in the colored wires to the switches and then literally plug the quick connect and everything's run. So that harness runs up front. It's gonna give me a couple of LEDs in each corner at the bottom down here and over here, just to light up the deck looking back. Uh, just for rigging and whatnot, getting on and off the boat in the dark. We've got our anchor winch stuff, and that's what I'm moving on to next, is my rapid winch. Big, heavy-duty anchor winch can pull, you know, easily 80 to 100 pounds of anchor quickly, too. I also did wire in my fuel gauge. Just tried to hide it out of the elements, out of the way. Probably going to put a little anchor switch in right there, too, just to toggle up and down for when I need to run the anchor. So... Either that or I'm going to put it on the tiller handle. Haven't quite decided yet. We'll see what the tiller handle looks like and if there's a good spot for it. Still got to run the anchor light up and the bilge pump in the bottom and hose out the side. But let's move on to the anchor winch and get that going so I can finish wiring my nav lights and the anchor winch itself. This is what happens when I drop all of the butt splices from all the way here. 100 splice pickup. Here is one of the most critical parts of a river boat, especially the way we fish in Michigan. We are allowed to drop anchor on the river bottom, ideally not on bedding gravel and stuff, but we can drop anchor. So when I have a boat this size, I'm gonna need quite a bit of anchor to hold, especially when the water levels are up or I'm just in faster current. This anchor system is a rapid winch. Uh, there's not a website for these guys. There's a friend of mine who owns this company. He builds them and they are fantastic. I've had two of them now and they've held up really, really well. The only reason I got rid of the first was because I sold it with the boat. This is a 12 volt system. And I don't know the specs on necessarily the feet per second or anything like that, but this is plenty fast to pull that anchor up. And the cool thing is, even when there's a ton of weight on the anchor, it's not gonna slow down. 
you'll hear the motor change a little bit, but it's really still gonna pull just as fast. So again, critical part to what we do here in Michigan. There's a switch on the winch here because when I get back to the launch, I'll just drop this down into the anchor nest on the trailer. The anchor will sit in there and be safe and sound. And then we'll put a series of other switches in. I can just stack them in. It's just a three wire harness. I'll stack a switch in the back for when I'm driving, either on the tiller handle or somewhere in the back area. I usually put one up near the front deck. So if somebody's up in the front, they can control it there too. And then we have the one on the tower. But again, I could add as many switches as I want because the switches trip a solenoid pack, just a little box of where wires connect. And that's what tells the motor to go up, down, etc. Really cool, rapid winch. Shoot me an email or comment below and I'll get you his information or I'll try to post it in the description so that you can get a hold of Brad at Rapid Winches and he can get you these shipped all over the country. Easy to install, fantastic unit for any boat, especially a river boat. We are going to do what I've been not fearing, but anxiously waiting to do this whole time is cut the flooring. So we're gonna rip an angle on all of the outside edges so that it can fit up to the wall nice and snug and not have a gap. We'll fit them in without the vinyl on as soon as everything's fit up nice. I'm looking for less than an eighth of an inch gap all the way around everything because when we put the vinyl on, it's right here, it's about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe even less. So this is gonna eat up a little space, but not all of it. I want a nice snug fit. If I don't have to trim it, that would be great. We'll see what we can do. We're gonna get to cutting. We'll put you on time-lapse so you can watch the process start to finish. So I knew it would be a full day of cutting in boards. Why I started by finishing some wiring, I don't know. But the boards are all cut. Six pieces there. That's gonna go in, fill the bottom, the front. Everything went pretty smooth. Thinking I'm getting a little better at this and the templates of the front pretty much just cut in and I could flip it to mirror the other side. And it really went smooth all in all. So now it'll be a matter of getting my vinyl nice and tight, especially on the edges. And that way we can fit it in really nice and tight uh, together. So especially those corners where you gotta wrap the corners a little bit, we're gonna have to really play it safe on those, not get too crazy thickening up the material so that we, uh, we can fit everything in nicely. Big, big news though, check this out. We're ready to run, essentially. Tiller handles on, fuel lines all run. I gotta shorten the kicker fuel line up a little bit. Tidy things up once the floor's in and this baby's ready. Big old comfy tiller handle, really nice friction system. We'll walk through the motors and everything when we get out on the water. But that happened today, thanks to Mikey B coming in on Saturday, helping get this done. I'm really hoping tomorrow, Sunday would be an optimistic first run. Monday for sure though. I'm gonna lay the vinyl on these boards real quick, uh, get it curing up so that tomorrow I can come in and install them. Got a little sweaty. Whew. Got all the vinyl glued press down, I roll it, I take a cutting board, I cut out the holes that are in there. I just like to do that so that the glue can sit down tight 
on the corners that lets me work it in there for the circle hatch for the gas tank that gives me access to the fill and everything and that hatch for the starboard side so we're gonna leave these sit overnight been here all day it's almost six o'clock come back tomorrow i'll wrap all of the vinyl around the wood staple it in it's using pneumatic stapler and then it goes in the boat try to get here nice and early the goal is to sand out obviously there's a little blister here but to sand out and blend this stuff into a uniform coat let's see what happens i'm going to start with 120 and see if that blends it i think this was like 60 or 80 grit so i'm just going to start with this back section and see what happens I think here's the consensus. That's 80 grit, 120 didn't blend it very well, but it took care of the big marks that were in here. What you see now, these lines, that's all just heat transfer from my welds. So I'm not really bummed if those show through a little bit. That really doesn't bother me. Uh, and then I think what I'd like to do is get it all. We're gonna do 80 and then I think 120. And while Corey's out there sanding the hull, I'm gonna get all these boards stapled and essentially ready for install. Here we go. All wrapped, stapled. Didn't do anything crazy with the corners. Just basically tried to keep it to where the top side, you won't be able to see anything. This should tuck right in and you won't be able to see any seams normally. I would do something a little fancier with a wrapped corner, but because we're seaming these, I wanted to play it safe. It's a big mess. I had to put my knee pads on because I was going to be feeling it if I didn't. I went through pretty much exactly 1,000 5 16th inch staples. They are stainless steel. I like to do that. Just I know it's not going to rust. Corey is outside sanding right now and I'm gonna go see where she's at. I'm gonna be working out in the sun, I guess, because I gotta get some stuff in the front done, like the batteries, the battery trays for the uh, trolling motor. Gotta get that done before I can put the front deck in anyway. Hold it right there, young lady. How did that go? It looks really good. Just dulled them out, blended everything in, and now I think we're going to be able to oxidize evenly and it's going to look really nice. That fishing vinyl is in. Whew. That was an all-day affair combined with sanding the sides. The wonderful Miss Corey took that on and crushed it. So tomorrow is just finished tying up the wiring in the rear, wire in the fish finder, pretty important, and then the trolling motor. I'm just going to install the quick release bracket uh, and then I have the wire run batteries are here that's the access port to the gas tank and then we have to carpet the tackle trays and that's pretty much it so tying up loose ends hopefully maybe for an afternoon boat ride yeah. we'll go break the motor in get everything tested out holy moly so much work, so close to being done.
maiden voyage time. That's why we love our Suzuki's. It's actually the first time we're starting here. Yeah, and just for fun. There she goes. Well, she floats. What are you most scared of? That we cavitate. No, oh, we're definitely gonna cavitate. The coolest part so far is there's no water down in the bilge, so we're still leak free. We're breaking the motors in. They're not cheap, so we're gonna follow the owner's manual to a T. And this little guy will break in naturally with trolling because we're gonna vary the speed as we adjust with the currents of the river. So what we're gonna do now for the next couple hours till the sun's starting to come down, we're gonna putz up stream just like this and break these motors in. Rivy, do you like your new boat? What you got going there? The throttle, so the that's a tachometer. So, so we're at 1400 RPM right now. The RPMs can um, fluctuate during this break in. And no cavitation. Oh, no cavitation yet. Not till we go fast, but hopefully not. I feel like a five year old driving this. <laughs> I'm like, woo, 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 no, you're woo, doing great. Woo, it's a jet. You're going to have to do that all the time. We've passed about 600 kayakers and tubers already. We only hit bottom once, well twice. We bumped a little log, I saw it coming, it wasn't a big deal. And the kicker motor, we quit, quit we breaking that in because <laughs> that one hit a little something. So, eh, it it's gonna happen. It'll be fine. It's a tough boat. How's our water doing? Still bone dry down there. Still putzing. There's a pontoon up ahead. There it is, pontoon on the river. Look at all the beautiful bugs swimming on top. There's no trout down in this part of the river, otherwise those bugs would be under attack. There's no brownies down here? No, water's too warm. Maybe in the winter they'd come down, but the water's 73, 74 degrees. Too warm. River's, river's happy though. Get to go 4,000 RPMs. Okay. Definitely gonna need to drop the motor, I think. It runs really clean though. We're at 3,900, cruising beautifully. Yeah, I'm real happy. Look at, I can come down to 3,700 and we're still on step, running clean as a whistle. We just cavitated a little taking off, which might just be we need to reset the trim. Cavitation queen. The only when we start to go. We're, so if we, well, even when we get above a certain, okay. certain speed. The only thing we can try to do is, because we're not at the base trim, so I'm gonna try to reset the trim in a second here, and then we'll see what happens. Look at that house straight ahead, isn't that cool, way up on the hill? <laughs> a lot of bugs hatching right now. Running 3,700 RPM, 3,800, doing about 20, 21 but we are going to have to lower the motor a hole because we're, we're cavitating, as Corey said. Catching a little air if we go a little faster. She runs well right now. That was 4,200 RPM, but we're catching a little air if we go much faster. That's 4,500. We're ripping right now. This is fast. So either need fins or drop it down and hope it doesn't because it runs pretty clean 
Hope it doesn't spray and we'll be all right. We got the first two and a half hours of break in on the big boy, the 140. And unfortunately, we're gonna have to drop it a hole. It just loses the grab of the water uh, when you give it some juice quick. So it, it eases on plane. It was running like low to mid 20s at 3600, 3800 RPM, which is awesome. Plane handled great, but we gotta drop it because if you hammer down, it couldn't get on plane. Just cavitated so ventilated whichever you prefer with the jet who knows so we're gonna do that and then we'll take it for another test ride and hopefully that'll be it all in all super happy with how everything performed handled and this boat is so wide and stable that's what we're after i can't wait to get four or five people in it and fish out of it that is officially a wrap on this boat build we'll follow up and let you know what we find out with performance in terms of dropping the motor and getting all the other bells and whistles in. So expect, and I said there'd be three parts, there'll be a fourth part just to follow up to this. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. We're gonna do more of this stuff. Stay tuned, subscribe, and thank you for watching. Really appreciate it.